Examples like this one are sadly all too common. Matt Bodie's Instagram account was hacked using a method called credential stuffing. Credential stuffing is one of the easiest hacking methods out there. You could probably have a go at it yourself. In essence, it is taking someone's account details, usually obtained from a data breach or data breach, as my friends in the US like to call it, and reusing those credentials to log into other popular sites and accounts. Because quite simply, most people will reuse their passwords across multiple sites. And if you're wondering whether one of your accounts may have been affected by a data breach, then the answer is probably yes. As you can see, it happens all the time. In Bodhi's case, whoever hacked into his account probably didn't even need to spend too long going through the credential stuffing process because they probably just had his Facebook credentials thanks to Facebook's numerous data breaches. The last one being in March this year when the information of 533 million accounts was leaked online. Now in truth, this leak didn't explicitly contain passwords, but it did contain usernames, email addresses, telephone numbers, and countless other pieces of personal information. So whilst there is nothing you can do about a data breach, there are a few simple steps you can take to protect your Instagram account. Now I've done a few of these security videos. You can check out the one on Signal and WhatsApp below. And I always start with the one thing that is going to stop 99% of wannabe hackers dead in their tracks. And that is to enable two-factor authentication or 2FA as, as it is commonly known. If you're not familiar with 2FA, I have another video that I'll also link to below, but basically it acts as a second level of authentication when you're logging into your accounts. In addition to providing your password, you'll also need to provide the six digit pin code created by the 2FA app. So whilst the hacker might have your username and password, it's highly unlikely they'll have the pin code, which basically means they're stuffed. Enabling 2FA on your Instagram account is very easy. Simply click on your profile icon in the bottom corner of the window, followed by the menu icon in the top right corner. In the menu, click on settings, followed by security, and then two-factor authentication. We'll click on get started, and then we have three 2FA options. If you don't use a 2FA app or you don't intend to, then I recommend either using WhatsApp or SMS, but I use Authy, so I'll click on authentication app, which is the recommended and safest option. At this point, Instagram instructs us to download a 2FA app. Now, when I clicked on install app, all I got was this, which is a bit odd, but don't worry. As I already said, I use Authy, so all I need to do is click on done, and then choose set up another way. This other way provides you with a key which you can copy into your 2FA app. I'll open up Authy and choose enter key manually. Paste the code, choose the correct logo and give your new 2FA account a name. When you're done, hit save. If I switch back to Instagram and click next to complete the process, I just need to enter the six digit code shown in Authy to link my two accounts. So I'll switch back, check the number in Authy, and then enter it into Instagram. And that's it, I'm all done. Just by taking these steps, you have significantly reduced the chances of your account being hacked. Copy these codes and save them somewhere safe. You'll need these if you ever lose access to your 2FA account. And now if I log out of Instagram and back in again, you'll see I'm asked for my 2FA code. Having set up 2FA, it's a good idea to log out of Instagram on any other device you might still be logged into, such as your laptop, desktop, or tablet. To do this, head back into settings, click on security, and this time we're going to click on login activity. Here is a list of all the devices where you're currently logged into Instagram. Log out of each one by clicking on the three dots and choosing log out. As the prompt warns, if you're not familiar with the sessions you're logging out of, if you don't recognize the location or the device, then you should change your password. Remember, because we've set up 2FA, anyone else trying to log into your account will need that 2FA code, which they won't have, so you're already very well protected. But if you don't recognize any of these sessions, it is best to change your password. 
Whilst we're on this security page, it's worth checking what other third-party apps have access to your account. There are a ton of these third-party apps which add filters to your photos and videos, provide you with analytics, and lots of other useful features, such as the ability to mass unfollow or unlike. Now, these apps are obviously not all bad, but some are. So before installing and allowing them access to your Instagram account, it's worth having a closer look. Take this one, for example. On the surface, you look at it and you think four out of five stars, it must be pretty good, which may prompt you to just hit the get button. But if we click on it for more information, you can see that actually other users who have tried it suggest that it might be dodgy. Now it could be completely legitimate and these users might be wrong, but it would certainly make me think twice before installing it. Some of these apps, but not all, will appear in apps and websites in your security settings. Click on active and remove anything that you don't recognize or no longer use. As I mentioned, not all apps will show up here, so it's worth going through your phone to see what other Instagram related apps you may have once used. If you no longer use them, and if you created an account with them, delete the account first before deleting the app altogether. Finally, one of the ways countless Instagram users get scammed is by clicking on a link in a fake Instagram email. You can easily check if an email is legitimate within the Instagram app itself because it provides a list of legitimate emails that they have sent. You'll find this list in security under emails from Instagram. If the email you received purporting to be from Instagram is not on this list, delete it or mark it as spam, which will alert your email provider before deleting it. So that is how to secure your Instagram account. If you'd like to know how you can post photos and videos to Instagram from your desktop or laptop without needing your mobile phone, then you might be interested in this. Okay, in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can access the Facebook and Instagram Creator Studio, which is where you go to post your videos and photos to Instagram from your computer. I'll then walk you through posting one of my own videos so you can see the whole process from start to finish. I'll be following Facebook's official guide to do this, which I'll link to in the description below so you can follow along. Time tags are in the comments section so you can skip ahead at any time. So let's get started. To begin, as the guide stipulates, to access the Creator Studio, we first need to convert our Instagram account to either a business or creator account. Which one should you go for? Well, a business account is more for, is more for established companies. You get additional features such as being able to sell directly from your Instagram account, and you can allow customers to book appointments and that kind of thing. Creator accounts, on the other hand, are more for people like me, individuals looking to make a name for themselves by creating content online and growing a fan base. Unless you are an established company, you'll probably want to opt to create a creator account. Switching to either account is completely free. It doesn't affect anything you've done previously on Instagram, and both accounts get access to the Creator Studio, which is what you need to upload from your computer. To make the switch, click on the profile icon in the bottom right corner of your Instagram app, followed by the hamburger menu in the top right of the page. You then want to choose settings followed by account. And if you scroll down slightly, you'll see the option to switch to a professional account. Click continue to skip through the screens and you'll arrive at this screen where you'll be asked to select a category for your account. I'll choose digital creator and enable the option to display on profile. We then get the choice of a creator or business account. So I'll go with creator and then you have the option to go through these five steps. They're not compulsory, but you may wish to complete them anyway. I'll add a bio to my profile and that is stage one complete. The next step is to create a page for our Facebook account. So I'll switch over to the computer to do that. Click on the Facebook icon in the top left of the screen and choose pages followed by create new page. Give your page a name and a category. I'll call mine Wilson's Wall Art. And as before, I'll be a digital creator. You can add bio details if you wish. And when you're ready, click create page. 
At this point, you can take the time to develop your page by adding a profile picture, banner image, and that kind of stuff. But for now, we'll skip over this and just hit save. The final step in the process is to link our Facebook account with our Instagram account, which we can do from the Creator Studio. To access the studio, browse to business.facebook.com forward slash Creator Studio. Or if you have the help guide open, you can access it from there. From this page, you can create posts from both Instagram and your new Facebook page simply by clicking on either icon up the top here. To link to your Instagram account, click on the icon and choose connect account. You will then be prompted to log in to Instagram, which I do through my Facebook account. Click continue and we're then prompted to complete a few more steps in the Instagram app. So switch back over to your phone, click on your profile icon in the bottom right corner of the screen and this time choose edit profile. In our profile settings, we'll click on page followed by connect to an existing page. I'm not sure why my page is displayed twice here. Hopefully you'll only see your page once, unless of course you have several different pages, but choose which one you want to connect to and click done. Back on your computer, click on OK, and it should open in your Instagram Creator Studio page. If it doesn't or if nothing happens, instead you can try clicking on try again and reconnect to Instagram, and this time you should be fine. So there we are. From here, we can now post directly to our Instagram account. So let's go through uploading a video. Start by clicking on create post, and then you can click on add content to add either a video or image. Here's the video that I've already prepared. So I'll choose this one. And I also have some text ready to go in a document, which I'll copy and paste into the caption window. You can choose to add your location, and if you scroll down slightly, you also have the option to publish your post on your Facebook page at the same time, which I'll choose to do. Instagram will use a still from the video as your cover image, unless you have something else prepared, which I have, so I'll navigate to that. And finally, in the advanced settings, you have the option to turn off comments. When you're ready, you can click publish or you can click on the little down arrow to schedule your post to be published at a later time. You can separately amend the Facebook version of your post if you wish, otherwise you're all done. If we switch back over to Instagram on our phone, there is our new post in our timeline. So there we have it. Visit the website for lots more tips on Instagram and all your other favorite apps. And if you found this video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick tips like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.